Welcome back to Funnel Crossover. Your boy PJ is still here. Marky Mark with the scarf. And beside me, we have our special guests. Introduce yourself, guys. Thanks you for, thank you for coming on to the show. Uh, what's up, uh, Pinoy Crossover fam? Uh, I'm Mike Samira. I'm Al Gregorio. I'm John Samira. Thank you guys for coming on. You guys are prominent people in the basketball, Filipino basketball community. Let's start off with the question. You've been in the Filipino basketball community for a long time. You've seen a lot of stuff. So let's start off with what is your relationship to basketball? Like what is your team or what have you been doing in the Filipino basketball community? Yeah. Uh, well, I've been playing uh, in Filipino organized basketball since I was uh, 10 years old. Uh, so that's uh, just over 27 years, almost 28 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, just uh, as a player, uh, you know, kind of a, a, a leader on a team uh, that's kind of spread it out into kind of a, or an organization or kind of uh, just a group of guys that grew up uh, playing basketball together and now they all have kids and uh, it's almost like an extended uh, family for sure. Mm -hmm. Al? Well, I've been around <laughs> Filipino <laughs> basketball since uh, the late 70s. Wow. Oh, wow. So when there was that's only like... one league in Toronto, so I've seen it grow and I've seen mm -hmm. The growth, I've been coaching these guys since they were teenagers. Mm. Um, probably better known for 25 for life and uh, the team that we had. Mm -hmm. um, I was playing basketball in the Philippine, Filipino community for, you know, as long as I can remember. remember. I started off pretty young, um, had some success and, you know, I'm a, I'm a little bit younger than these guys. <laughs> a lot of bit younger. <laughs> <laughs> Centuries are like but, decades. Uh, like that to had, you know, their guidance and, you know, they kind of coached me throughout. Yeah. So, um, I know I played in pretty high level, like high school here, won OFSA, and then played university here. Um, and after that, I decided to go to the Philippines for a while. Played four years of college. Uh, played in the D-League. And, uh, yeah, so then I had a quite, you know, a lot of experience there, had a good time in the Philippines. And um, yeah, so then now I just play in like local leagues here, so. Won a college championship? Oh, I mentioned I won, that. I won a college yeah. championship, went to the finals a few times, won to, no, I didn't win D-League, went to the finals, D-League championship finals. Um, but yeah, that was cool, it was a good experience. It seems like, like basketball was a big part of your life, like, but how did it start for you guys? How did basketball start coming to your life? And do you guys remember that time when you just felt like, oh, basketball just came into you and you just embraced it? Uh, well, for me, it's, it was more uh, kind of tagging along and watching my dad play initially. Uh, he was uh, actually a teammate, believe it or not, of uh, Al's. Um, uh, his, uh, my dad and his dad were actually uh, teammates and uh, uh, Al was kind of the young buck that kind of came in. But uh, that's how I was introduced to basketball. It was kind of a, uh, a weekend kind of thing to do, uh, it definitely got us plugged into each other in terms of uh, the Filipino community. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I mean, that's how it got started. And from there, obviously, you're just, if you're going to go on Saturday, go watch your dad play, mm -hmm. then it only made sense that they started a league for their kids to start playing. And that's where I kind of came in. Mm -hmm. Al, when, where did oh, wow. coaching? Oh, let's start, let's start on your playing days since we did when we established all the way in the Philippines. Or, I grew up. It, yeah. it was it was in the blood. I grew up. Mm -hmm. My dad was playing pro in the Philippines mm -hmm. when when we first came here. Of course, oh. Tito Eddie. Um, <clears throat> but when we first came in, when there was only one league, Philac was back in again late seventies. Mm -hmm. um, basketball was the central social aspects for Filipinos in the city. There weren't a lot of Filipinos in the city. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So every Saturday, people would bring their families, their kids, their in-laws, parents. They'd be at the gym, and then they'd go to somebody's house for dinner, and it's usually potluck. And then, of course, then they'd play those Filipino gambling games, whether mm -hmm. it be mahjong, blackjack, Dung or whatever. <laughs> but basketball was the center of the social scene yeah. for all Filipinos. The young guys would go eat, pre-drink, and go to the local clubs. Mm -hmm. and, if, and all the other families, they just grew up at these parties. Like, I remember playing with his dad and going to their house after, mm -hmm. and there'd be like 40, 50 people there. Wow. So it just became like a It was the center. Thing. It yeah, was the center, the center of it all. Of and then, of course, uh, playing high school ball and, mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. And then John? Um, just <coughs> basically like my brother, like yeah. I was always surrounded, surrounded by it. Yeah. Um, I think I took it a little bit more seriously, like as every year passed because I felt like, you know, I was doing pretty good and um, I was living the ball is life life before mm. ball was, you know, that was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, anything, any, you know, the weekends were full of basketball, two, three games <clears throat> across the city. 
And, um, you know, I just, I think I gravitated towards it because of, uh, like, the competition. And uh, I think I played with a good team, so we constantly won, and it felt good to win. And a lot of these Filipino community, uh, the, the leagues are, uh, they're small, so you know everybody. So it's like br bragging rights, right? Mm -hmm. So when we walk into the gym, like, we're definitely the team to beat. That's mm -hmm. how I felt mm -hmm. growing up. And I was always a young guy with these guys, so I had to, I had to up my skills if I wanted to play. So I guess that's what, you know, led me to, you know, living this basketball life for a while and seeing how it went. Mm -hmm. He used to tag along, like any tournaments we were down south anywhere, you know, John would be there. He'd be there. Yeah. Let's Mike, talk about Mike would be <laughs> <laughs> body <slam. laughs> Let's talk about bragging rights. You said bragging rights. Talk about you you coach twenty five for life. Talk about what this twenty five for life dynasty is. Because I, I, even though I haven't played you guys personally, I'm not, I, I haven't played open because I'm scared. <laughs> like, what is this, what is this, this 25 is, for life record that I've heard of? Or like, people are scared of you. 25 for life is, is a brand. Don't, you that, can't, don't, don't say that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not, I mean, I think just the, the term itself, it was just a joke of like, I, I think joke. we just had a, a running joke within uh, our team. It's just like, you know, if you had to pick an age of like, mm -hmm. uh, how old you'd want to be like, for, Forever. Well, what's like the best? Mm. What age would you want to be at? And uh, I think a lot of us were around like 25, or some of us were a little bit older, but we were kind of like we just picked the age 25 because it was, you know, <laughs> quarter you're, you're, you're quarter. mature enough. Yeah. Yeah. You had you, you started to make your own money, and you're just like, yeah, you know, I want to be 25 for life, mm. and and that just became like the term for our our squad or whatever. But in terms of like you describing the team and stuff, I don't know if it was. Went that far. I mean, we we played a lot. Played in a lot of leagues. Played a lot of tournaments. We won a lot. Um, I I don't know if you would call it a dynasty or anything, but there's the honesty. Yeah, Filipino basketball. We were yeah, really yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. it, it it's uh, we also gravitated to try and like bring all like the best players and mm -hmm. kind of like collect. So. Uh, if we saw someone that was good on another squad, and we would be like, you know, uh, hey, you know, someone's not going to be like missing a lot of games. Why don't you run with us in this league or whatever? So we would, you know, put pieces together, and, and I was I was like uh, recruiting a lot too. So um, I think the the funny thing with us was <clears throat> we've been doing it since like '98, '99, and I, it's 2017 now, and we. We actually are still playing together, which is a testament in itself. But mm -hmm. uh, we actually just won a couple tournaments and stuff, and and it's a whole bunch of new people, mm -hmm. which is which is different. So there's a couple core guys that are still around, but there's some fresh faces that grew up watching us play and always wanted to play with us. And yeah. Yeah. Nice. he's humble. So you guys have created yeah. like, yeah. in a sense, like a culture yeah. that yeah. like just you know attracts us, you know the same type of you know people with the same mentality or the same kind of you know. Uh, mindset in terms of how they approach a basketball, right? So that's mm. a, yeah. that, I would call that a dynasty. If Can we, well, <laughs> we built yeah. our relationship, uh, we built yeah. our reputation really, yeah. um, not just in Toronto. Yeah. Mm. It's a lot of the tournaments down south that we were talking about earlier, Dean LeBayan. Yeah. Yeah. Dean LeBayan, we go, when we go anywhere and he's not with us, people are asking him, if we're in New York, oh. hey, Dean come with you guys? Mm. You know, or JP or Mike, if, if somebody's missing. So the reputation got built on us not just winning in Toronto, but it was a lot of tournaments that we were getting invited to down south. Mm -hmm. I mean, even tournaments that paid us to go down to, 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 their, yeah. to their tournament just to show up. Mm -hmm. um, some money tournaments that we've gone to and, and that we've, and what, I think there was, a there was a money tournament we went to where the other team wanted to quit at halftime. Wow. And it's, it's a money tournament. There's mm -hmm. a prize money at the end of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I mean, so, I think that's where we've really built our, our reputation. Mm -hmm. um, but in Toronto, in terms of Toronto, I don't know, I think we went, what, 13 out of 15 years in Philac or something like that? I think that's the term. <laughs> you know? I think that's a yeah, good term to say. It's a dynasty of yeah. the 13 out of 15. We don't have a lot of time. Let's talk about um, parting advice. Let the, the basketball scene now in the Filipino community, what would you like to see in terms of the players playing um, I guess their their playing styles here, or I don't know, maybe their like career advice to play in NCAA or even PBA overseas. Anything you'd like to say? Uh, probably my brother would have uh, the best insight on that. Yeah. I would say you know try to get as as much exposure as you can because like use social media as a tool. I feel like um, now um, you can get your name out there a lot easier than it was before and. I would honestly, if you are thinking about going to the Philippines and playing ball, I would actually go there first 
and see mm -hmm. it. It's a different game. You know, it's mm -hmm. different. They learn a lot of different things than we do growing up, different fundamentals. Mm -hmm. I think they're a lot tougher out there, mm -hmm. so um, you should adapt yourself and try to get experience like that and go to a lot of camps in the States and stuff like that, you know, just, just grind, man, because if you want to do this as a pro, it's not a joke, man. Mm -hmm. uh, coach Al, you're a coach. What would you want to see um, future players, Filipino players, um, be mindful of? Well, as John was saying, I'd like them to see Philippines as their last resort, really. Mm -hmm. How far can you get over mm -hmm. here? Mm -hmm. even, uh, even playing in a, in a D2 school downside and you're practicing with a program, and you're playing against those guys each and every day, mm. you'll get better. Mm -hmm. As like he was saying though, the mentality in the Philippines, those guys are playing for their lives. Mm -hmm. A lot of the kids here, sorry to say, are spoiled. They have backup plans, yeah. but they're, they're spoiled. Yeah. Those guys, they're playing for their lives. Yeah, you know, right. That's all they have. Mm -hmm. So that's why they are tougher and hungrier. Mm -hmm. So if you're going there waltzing in thinking, yeah, I'm gonna take this by <laughs> storm, you know, guys are gonna knock you on your backside mm. you know, and then step on you and then yeah. step on you because it's life mm -hmm. that's it mike what would you want to add uh i mean uh, pretty much what what these guys said it, it's uh you know <clears throat> use social media as a tool which is huge i mean uh when i was growing up i really didn't i mean this was before social media yeah. this was i mean we were talking about guys who were trying to make it over there these guys had to send vhs tapes of themselves wow. and mm -hmm. uh you know, fast forward. Now you just have to, you know, post something on Instagram and uh, you know, use a bunch of hashtags, and all of a sudden, you're you're worldwide. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would say use social media as a tool, but mm -hmm. also understand that it's a totally different lifestyle over there, and yeah. you have to be ready. Wow, that that was such great advice, and I think that's what these kids need nowadays that's to have true. someone to look to look up to to have to have those experiences to to make sure that they're choosing the right choice. There's a lot of good Filipino basketball players coming up, and I'm sure that now the development is getting better, that the training is also going to be better.